I was talking with a few people online about async await and promises and um, some of the code that I want to write today in the videos that I'm going to do on testing, I'm going to use async and await. And we were, we were chatting on online and um, some people expressed, you know, it'd be good if you could do a video just talking about how this works. So what I thought I would do is I would take a piece of code from your current assignment and I would rewrite it four or five different ways. And I would show you how async and await can be used and how we can use promises and um, hope, hopefully get you a little more comfortable with them. The use of promises in JavaScript now and therefore the use of async await, uh, it's everywhere. So even if you aren't going to use it a lot yet, you're going to encounter it when you look at other people's APIs, documentation, when you're working on other people's code. So it's good to be comfortable with the ideas of it and it just takes time. So if you look at it once and you think, I don't understand this, you're exactly like everybody else. <laughs> Nobody gets it the first few times. It takes a lot of repetition and you really have to I don't know, you have to change the way you think about some of this stuff because the way that the code reads and what's happening internally are not the same. So it's a mind trick that you have to have to do. Anyway, let me, let's me let look at some code and I'll show you uh, what I'm talking about. So what I have here is I have, I've just stripped down a part of assignment five and I've got two pieces of code from two different files. I've just put them into one file so we could we could talk about them. So at the top, we've got some code that works with Mongoose and talks to the MongoDB backend and it's getting a bunch of data. And I've written it in an old style, a callback style. So if you look at what this code is doing, we accept a bunch of arguments. Uh, the page, the category, etc., and we also accept a callback. We figure out, first of all, whether or not the, the arguments that have been passed to us are valid. If they're not valid, then down here, um, we send back an error on the callback. So we're using typical node style callbacks where the first argument to the callback is an error. So I'm sending back an error and say this is wrong. And if I was gonna if I was gonna write it in this style, what I would tend to do is um, one of the things that I'm constantly trying to encourage people to do is not indent their code so much. So you see how the bulk of this code is indented all the way over to the right. There's no reason for us to do this if we just invert our thinking. So one of the strongest things you can do when you're thinking about programming is you can take a piece of logic and often if you invert the logic you can shorten it or you can make some interesting changes to it. So if I take this error case here and I don't do it there, what if instead of looking for this to work, what if I say, what if these are not true? So if those are not true, then let's do this. Let's get rid of this. Let's put it here like so. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return. So what a lot of people do is they go down here and they say else, uh, do this and we haven't achieved anything. If I do that, I'm still, I'm deeply indented here. I'm indented too far, but let's just go back. So I'm indented all the way like this. So get rid of that, get rid of the else, put a return here and we don't ever put an else after a return because we don't need one. So now what that lets me do is it lets me take this code and bump it over to the left and it, it reads a lot more cleanly. So what I do is I take care of all the erroneous data paths through this function. After line six, or line five really, but once I get to line eight, from this point onward, I know that these arguments are clean, that I can work with them. So I've already done the validation on it. Okay, so what do we do? Then we come down here, we do a bunch to package up the arguments that were sent into us so we can use them. Then we uh, grab our model. In this case, we're trying to get all posts uh, from the database. So we do a find according to this filter that we've defined. We sort uh, in descending order on the post date. We do paging, et cetera, et cetera. And then when it's all done, we call exec. And exec actually runs the, runs the query that we want to run against the database. 
Now everything up till this point right here, like if you think about everything up to here has been happening synchronously. So when I talk about uh, synchronous, we mean synchronous where if you broke this down into two words, we're talking about something that happens at the same time, right? And if we break asynchronous down, what we're talking about is something that doesn't happen at the same time, not the same time. So same time, not same time. Uh, anyway, so we have been going through our function, every line executes and goes to the next line, to the next line, to the next line, and everything's blocking as it goes. So this line seven has to complete before line eight completes and on and on and on down. But then we get down here to exec and inside exec, we're passing in a function. And uh, let me just fix this indenting. We're passing in a function and we're saying uh, we expect to get error back and data. So this is this is where this callback is going. And this this is even something we could fix. So you see here how we're saying I am passing in a callback function here. My callback function checks to see if there's an error. If there's an error, it does the callback with error. If there isn't, it does a callback with null and data. And um, you could reduce this because our callback works the same way. So really we could just take this whole thing and we could say callback like that. So we could pass the callback function because that's how the callback function works. So now come down here and look at our express code. I've got a route, a get route. And what does the get route do? Well, it pulls a bunch of arguments off the query string. And then it passes those to my get all posts function above. And the last thing it does is it adds this callback function. So the callback function either is gonna get error or it's gonna get data. If it gets an error, it's gonna send back a 500, HTTP 500, and it's gonna send back um, JSON that says, you know, there was an error. So this didn't work. And if it works, we're gonna send back a 200 and we're gonna package up the, the data as JSON and we're gonna send that back to the client. So we have a piece of code, which is also synchronous up till this point. So we say, you know, when somebody does a request to the server, it processes this and it gets all posts. And then what it does is it registers this callback to happen sometime in the future. Sometime in the future, we would like this code to execute and um, but we're not going to block on it. We're not going to wait. We're not going to have a synchronous code here because we don't want the web server to block because if it does, then it can't handle any other uh, requests coming in. We wanna keep handling requests from parallel users, okay? So this is a version of this code that uses callbacks. Okay, so let's rewrite this code. Let me show you another version of this code. So one of the things you can do um, in a lot of libraries is you can either do callbacks or you can do promises and there are lots of libraries that used to use callbacks and then they started to transition toward promises because promises are sort of the, the way that most asynchronous APIs should be written today in JavaScript. And what's happened is in some cases they used transitionary libraries to do their promises and now they can use real promises. So in uh, Mongoose, for example, you can say that you want to use promises, you wanna use actual promises inside of Mongoose. Okay, so that doing so would allow me to rewrite my function. Version two of this function could look something like this. Okay, so how has this changed? In version two of the function, what we're doing is we are returning a promise. We're constructing a promise, we're manually constructing a promise. And what we're gonna do here is we have a resolve and a reject. These are both functions. 
And what's gonna happen is we are either going to say that the code inside of this promise, which is gonna happen asynchronously, either works or fails, and we will indicate which is which. So we do basically the same thing that happened before. You can see here that the arguments are checked, and then a bunch of code takes place. We do our, we go and get all of our posts, find, sort, skip, limit, whatever, exec. But then we add on this right here, okay? So this says, um, then posts, resolve those posts, catch, error, reject those, okay? Now, this code is like this because previously you couldn't use real promises. In a previous in, uh, version of um, Mongoose and so on, they didn't really have real promises. So they had a thing called then, a thenable as they say, but it wasn't a real promise. And so you had to wrap up everything in your own, in your own promise. So you had this manual promise here, which is fine, but we could, we could improve on this a little bit in a second. So now let's, before I do improve on this, Let's see how it changes our code down here. So down here, instead of having a callback like so, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish this function and then I'm gonna write a then, which takes a data argument. And in the case of the data coming back, I'm going to do that. And in the case of an error, I'm going to catch the error and I'm going to do this. Uh, let's see here. I need that and that and that. Um, what am I doing wrong here? This, 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 this. Have I got that right? It's still not happy with me. No, I need a, what do I need? I need close my object literal, close my JSON call, close my catch, then this, and then I need to close the function and I need to close, yeah, okay. So there's an example of doing this using, using promises. So I've gotten rid of the callback and now I'm doing this code up here. Okay, so this code is returning a new promise. It's wrapping the entire logic of everything that's going on in here like this. So could we improve on this? Well, we could do our trick of rejecting early. So instead of doing this, what we could do is we could take this code here and we could say, um, if these are not true, then I'm gonna return promise.reject and I'm gonna say new error um, invalid args, whatever, with my error message. So that's gonna allow me to you know, bail early. So if this doesn't work, I'm gonna get out of this quickly and I'm gonna end up down here in my catch. The error is gonna come down here like so. So that's, that's interesting. So I'm using a synchronous version of promises. So I'm not creating a whole new promise here. I'm just doing promise.reject like this. And I'm going to uh, use promises, but I'm gonna use promises from a synchronous code path. So I'm gonna exit out there and I'll, I'll be gone quickly. Okay, so then what else can we do? Well, we've already got our promise coming out of exec. So previously what we did was we had a callback here and we didn't do we don't do that now. Now what we're doing is we're putting a then and a catch on here. But you'll notice that the then and the catch that are here look basically identical to the then and the catch that are here in the parent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this wrapping promise like like that. I'm going to pull all this over here. And I'm gonna get rid of the then and all of the rest of this. And what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to return the promise that this produces. So this will return a promise. 
okay? So look at this function. This function either returns this promise or it returns this promise. So post.find sort skip exec, exec is going to return a promise. And then down here, I'm gonna work with that promise. I'm gonna, I'm gonna receive it back and I'm gonna do then, I'm gonna do catch, okay, like this. Okay, now at this point, what we can do is we can, we can rewrite this code to make it a little bit cleaner. So let me, sh let me talk to you about async and await. So when you have a function, um, this function here, for example, the function returns a value and um, you know down here we call get all posts. Let me just change the name of this. Uh, we call get all posts and get all posts returns a function, sorry, returns a promise. And then we either deal with the resolved promise here or we deal with the rejected promise here. And you know we have two code paths that are going through here that are gonna make that possible. So a lot of people, what they wanna do is they wanna get away from having to write then and catch. So what they want to be able to do is they want to be able to write this code as if it was synchronous. So right now this code is asynchronous. We do a, we make a request to get all the posts, but then we have to wait. We have to wait and we have to split our code up into a then and a catch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to change this function and I'm going to decorate it by saying that it is going to be an asynchronous, fun asynchronous function. So here's what you have to understand about an asynchronous function. Asynchronous functions implicitly return a promise. So if you look at this code right here, this code, here's an asynchronous function, and it returns one. It doesn't, like there's no promises here. When you look at this, you're like, well, I don't see anything related to promises. But what's actually happening under the covers is JavaScript is actually going to wrap your return value in a promise.resolve. It's going to resolve this promise for you so that, uh, like essentially what it's gonna do is it's gonna write you know, the then for you and all the rest of it. So you don't have to do that. So what we wanna do is we wanna have JavaScript write the then and the catch for us. So when I put async on here, it allows me to, to do a trick. And the trick is that I can write code that looks like this. So let me just, let me put these two pieces of code beside each other so you can see what I'm talking about. I've got two versions of this code. So I have an async await version and I have this raw promise version and they, they do the same thing. Now, if I'm gonna make these, let's actually make these more equal because you say to me, what about the error case? So I'm gonna, um, okay, so let's do the following. I'll write, I'll write it out. So it's gonna be closer. Okay, here's our two versions. So because we put in the async keyword, we are now allowed to use this special await keyword. And what this await key keyword means is it means um, I wanna be able to suspend this function until the then. 
Basically, my code is gonna run synchronously. It comes down from this line to this line, it comes to this line, and when it sees the await, what it means is that this code here returns a promise, and I want to wait for that promise to come back with a result before this function continues. So it's going to artificially suspend the code and pause until, but it's not going to pause the environment. It's not gonna pause the runtime. So JavaScript, the main loop can keep going. It's just going to queue up something in the future that needs to come back and process this again. So this thing is going to return back to me a piece of data. That's exactly what's happening here as well with my then. But I'm able to write it in a style that looks closer to regular uh, synchronous code where I step through my code one after the other. If there's an error case, then it's gonna land inside this catch. Now, if I don't put a try catch on this, if I didn't have this and this thing were to throw, it would blow up my program because I would have an error that was uncaught. I would have an, un, uh, an uncaught promise rejection, which I don't want. So you still need to deal with your error cases, but you can deal with your error cases and they look like this. So now I could get rid of this code and my code would look like this. In code where your code is deeply indented and you've got lots of thens and the thens go in and this is where that style becomes really helpful. But in your mind, whenever you see somebody put async on the front of a on the front of a function, what it really means is that this whole function returns a promise. Like I could rewrite this up here. I could say async on this one too. But I don't need to because this thing already returns promises. So it's not it's not imperative that I do that. So if I were to rewrite this with async await style, just to show you what I mean, I could do something like this. Instead of saying promise.reject, I could throw here. I could throw. And down here, when I do this, so this is a promise. So I could say um, something like, like you wouldn't do this, but you could say const uh, posts equals await this. And then you could return those posts. Like there's no point in doing this because it's better to just return this directly. You know what I'm saying? Just return the promise and then do your awaiting down here. But you could rewrite it like this. So sometimes you'll see people do this. Whenever you see async, it means this function returns, this function returns a promise, right? Async automatically returns a promise. If you return another promise inside here, it's gonna wrap a promise around a promise, et cetera, and it's gonna, when it goes to resolve it, it will unwrap those for you. You have to be a little bit careful that you don't get like promises and promises and promises. But here, because I've said this is an async function, it means that I am going to use await. That's why we decorate our functions with async because we wanna be able to await. And then I can write in this try catch style and I can, I can get I can get values back from functions which return promises, which is really kind of amazing because it lets me get rid of all the thens and the catches and all that stuff. And my code can just read as if it's, um, if it's, as if it's all the same. So what I would say to you is you don't have to use async await right now. You, eventually you're going to want to, um, you say to me, Dave, no, I don't like, I don't like it. It doesn't make sense to me. It's ugly. Um, it confuses me. And those are all valid reasons for you to decide not to use it yet. But I want you to not be afraid of it. And I want you to understand what it's doing because when you see other people's code and they use it, you need to understand this thing returns a promise or this thing is asynchronous and I'm, I'm, a, I'm waiting on this code to happen. So I just wanted to do this brief 
discussion of async and await and promises because I'm about to use it in some of the other videos that I'm going to make. And I wanted you to at least have a reference for this. If you're still confused by this, totally okay. Uh, I'm happy to chat with you about it or if you want to go and do some more reading about it. it. It's a good idea for you to invest some time and understand it. We've just touched on you know some of the basics of working with this. There's a lot more to it than this. But that, that's a good introduction, I think, at least for the purposes of what we're going to do today.